managing your research, having already discussed methodological approaches, ethical issues, methods of data collection and analysis, we are now faced with the realities of conducting research in the real world. The planning and designing of research is supported by our theoretical understanding and knowledge gained from reading the literature on the topic. Without this, we would struggle to provide a rationale for our research and we would lack a justification for conducting a research project. However, we now need to turn our attention to the management of research in the real world. Thinking about real world context will help you to understand that a good research design should also require us to think about the context specific issues and the complexities of everyday lives which we need to consider in carrying out research. Armstrong et al. 2014 remind us that the research site is full of complexities and as such fieldwork requires researcher reflexivity. This means as a researcher you need to understand your position in relation to the context that you are researching. It is important to recognise that as a researcher you don't have a divine right to collect d data from your participants. You need to rem remember that you are a guest in the social world of your participants. In relation to ethics, Armstrong et al. remind us that these can never be fixed in the real world of fieldwork. They go on to discuss how researchers need to be able to negotiate through a complex terrain, compromising where appropriate. And so they describe the research field as a site of compromise. In Who Says What? where, why and how, doing re real-world research with disabled children, young people and family members. David Abbott comments how, whilst the social sciences have increasingly focused on the lives of children with disabilities and their families, there is little literature considering the context of the family home as a research site. Yet, where researchers seek out the experiences of young people with disabilities, negotiating access through family members and navigating the dynamics of the family home are important elements in securing a successful research encounter. He describes one study where researchers were keen to speak with the young males with D Duchenne muscular dystrophy as they transitioned between childhood and adulthood. The study focused on the experiences of the young people themselves as well as family members as the young people moved from childhood to adulthood. Initial contact was made through parents who, were, who had sons aged 15 or above. Accessing the young people had to be negotiated carefully. Researchers wouldn't necessarily know who they would be interviewing until they reached the family home and discussions took place. Some young people chose to participate and others did not. Some of the young people chose to be interviewed alongside uh, family members, others alone. Working around the routines of family life was also important. Researchers were often invited to attend the family home on an evening when all the family was likely to be at home. This meant that interviews had to take place among a rushed family life. Responding to the needs of the young people with muscular dystrophy, interviews earlier in the day were sometimes preferred by the young people as they became less well over the course of the day. However, this would mean that some family members, most likely fathers, 
who would be working would be excluded from the interviews. Abbott refers to being a good guest, meaning the researcher needs to respect the conventions of the context in which they are carrying out the research. The research study that Abbott refers to then is an example of how researchers need to manage the practicalities of research as the research goes live. The research design and planning may not always anticipate this real life context. Turning our attention briefly to risk, I'll start with the following quote from Ling, 1998, who makes this observation about social research. Many important empirical and theoretical problems taken up in the social sciences can be thoroughly and honestly studied only by placing oneself in situations that may compromise safety and security in a normative or corporeal sense. Ling also writes about edge work in the social sciences, that is, engaging in risky practices. It is important to recognise that engaging in field work can be risky, and that sometimes this is inevitably so. Edge work, if you are interested in reading further, is more of a deliberate engagement in such practices. So I'm not going to uh, delve any further into that here. In addition to Ling's observation, we can also consider Peterson, 2002, who discusses the fluidity of risk. What is dangerous and what poses a risk is not fixed, but shifts according to the context and to the researcher. And what the researcher perceives to be dangerous will also change, depending on the context of the research. <laughs>